Live from their living rooms, it's the Director's Chair with Stanton Welch. Hi everybody, uh, this is Stanton Welch uh, and we're here with another vlog from Houston Ballet and today we have Ian Cassidy here. Uh, Ian, how are you? I'm doing okay, how are you? I'm good, <laughs> what have you been up to? Um, a lot of stuff around the house. We have, we have a little one that we're trying to, uh, you know, figure out the homeschooling situation. Uh, my wife also teaches, so she's on the other end of the homeschooling situation. Right. So, um, there's been a lot of, a lot of that going on. A big learning curve. A big learning curve, yes. Have you been composing or anything? Um, a little bit here and there. Um, composing, I, I don't know if I practicing. use that word, but practicing, yeah, practicing. Of course, now my piano's out of tune, and I, <laughs> I don't want to hire somebody to come out and tune it right now. So no. <laughs> a little, it's a little dodgy. Yeah, I've got the pug here, so if you hear snorting, that's what the, the sound is. Um, so, uh, Ian, tell, just so people can get to know you a little bit better, tell you, uh, everybody where you're from, and what was the first thing that inspired you to be a dancer? Um, I'm originally from California, uh, north of San Francisco, in a tiny little town called Fairfax. Um, and I started dancing there uh, when the two of my best friends from school had started taking ballet um, on the advice of their baseball coach, actually, when we were about eight, nine years old, um, to help with strength and flexibility and all those kinds of things. So they um, kind of dragged me into the studio. I took a, uh, you know, a boys stretch and strength class, and that kind of... Uh, got me into it um of course there was the camaraderie of the three of us together um and uh just the whole uh ballet you know school community um but what really kind of got me was when i we started uh doing little shows and things and being choreographed on uh with uh, music that really inspired me and so i guess dancing to music and uh feeling the music and putting movement to the music was something that really kind of caught me from an early age. And that's different from baseball to have, to have the score there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A different kind of score. So then you came to uh, Houston Ballet Academy? Uh, yes. Uh, when I was 17, I auditioned um, for Houston Ballet Academy summer program because the, the audition was coming through town. They actually were at San Francisco Ballet. So I went down there with my friends and we auditioned there. Um, and we told them that we were looking to get into the company. I'm 17, turning 18, um, and we got accepted there. So I came and did a few months in the school in the, in the spring, through the summer, and then joined the company that summer. Right. And so then in, in joining the company, what, what would you say was the big shift? What was the most noticeable difference from school to company life as a dancer? Uh, um, uh, the <laughs> pace. <laughs> um, where suddenly the responsibility, I mean, we already, it already felt like a big responsibility being a dancer, trying to get better every day and you know, working so hard and making it the most important thing. But uh, being on stage all the time and having to learn choreography and get it ready to go on stage pretty quickly was was a big a big shift also big not thing. getting yeah from uh from school to company also not getting constant all day attention you know <laughs> from class and you know multiple classes or through rehearsals having a pair of eyes on you all the time you know you have to be a little bit more self-sufficient yeah that was a big shift too and so then in, in joining the company what did you feel like was your the, the, a ballet or a role that came along where you really went, wow, this is scary, this is the real deal, I'm doing an opening, I'm doing a full length. What, what, what was the thing that really, the time where you went, oh? <laughs> um, you know, probably doing Nutcracker Prince for the first time, because uh -huh. that came relatively early on um, in my, you know, second or third season, and, um, it was, you know, the first time doing a, having to do a, a full classical variation yeah. after the pot of the, on stage and, you know, um, and having that kind of pressure when you need to execute um, steps like that with yeah. the stamina and all of it. 
I think that was the first time I probably said, oh, wow, this is, this is hard. <laughs> and I think that's a unique thing with Ben's Nutcracker was the Prince actually had two classical variations. He had yeah. a part of the solo and coda in act one and act two. Yes. So by the time you got to act two, you were pretty, pretty wiped out. Yeah. yeah. You were also I mean, was, a little bit more relaxed by then too, which was, you know, helpful. Through but, exhaustion. <laughs> through exhaustion. Yeah. <laughs> but often that's a benefit, right? Like sometimes yeah. being a little bit high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Takes the edge off. It does, yeah. It's a little bit of a shake out. <laughs> yeah. Tell, what about then, talking of this, this is a similar feeling. I, I felt a few times when I was thrown on for a role or I got a chance with like 10 minutes notice, which mm -hmm. we all have at some point in our life. Was there some, one of those moments that really sticks in your brain where you had, oh my goodness, I've got to learn this in a day or I'm, um, and, and uh, be it even in the corps de ballet role or, or right through to a lead role. Um, was there something like that for you? I want to say actually that the, um, the first time we did Butterfly, yeah. uh, <laughs> there was an injury <laughs> and I ended up going on in the opening when I wasn't planning on that. But um, you were the opening. Did I switch partners then? Yeah. What was it was switch partners. It was Naomi, wasn't it? That's yeah, right. it was Naomi and you were the opening. And Naomi and I was the opening. Me. Yeah. Yes. And, and it was so, like the Saturday prior. Oh, maybe it wasn't. I can't remember how many days, but it was, it was time. It was pretty close. Yeah. And I remember going up, up into the fourth floor studio with you um, a day or two before the opening and, and kind of going through everything one-on-one, -on -one, which was very uh, helpful for me at that point. <laughs> All right, so I'm just checking my, my notes. I have my office on my window here. Sure. Oh, okay, so let's talk about a role that was created on you. I mean, I think, let's talk about Louis, because I think that that was a very specific, unique role. Mm -hmm. Tell me about him as a character and what, what made him special, do you think? And, and also what, as an actor and a partner, but as an actor, what, what made that a challenge or, or made that a unique experience? Um, I think he was uh, interesting and also tricky to play because of his um, aloofness, I guess, in a way. He was uh, um, a not a very, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, extrovert, extroverted yeah. character, you know? Yeah. So it was a lot of the... He's yeah. an introvert, yeah. So a lot of the things were happening internally. Um, a lot of his uh, uh, struggle being thrown into this situation and being expected to, you know, produce an heir and um, all those kinds of things. So trying to keep it uh, internal, but also show it um, is, uh, um, is, you know, is difficult, but also uh, interesting and challenging as an actor. Yeah, I think he, he's a character. I think what you're saying is that you have this whole range of emotion that you have to express, but you have to contain it because he wasn't someone who expressed it. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I also think it's interesting in, in ballet to have a character who doesn't have a big sexual relationship with the person he's in love with, but they have a, 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 a different relationship. Yeah, it, a different kind of bond that... Um, yeah, it comes about from a different direction than the, the normal, you know, way of being physical with each other. Um, so that's, uh, that was really nice actually over the course of the ballet to find those places to where the, the bond gets stronger and stronger mm -hmm. um, and not in a, you know, physical Passion. attraction kind yeah. of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also interesting, I think, to go as a character from different age groups and that each act is set in a different period of his life. And now that mm -hmm. you have, well, I mean, it's a 10 year old ballet, I guess now. Right. So you have also aged during that process and, and returned to the character in different stages of your life. Yeah. Uh, has that been different? Uh, yes, absolutely. Because the first time we did it, um, I did not have a child. Um, so, you know, um, imagining and that that becomes a big part of the of the ballet important part of yeah ballet, especially by the end the third act and uh, the last scene is you know um devastating in that that way um so having to uh, imagine that and try and create you know how that feels you know you have a pretty good idea of how that would be 
um, actually having a child the next time we came back to it, it was a whole, you know, a whole different um, yeah. level of, uh, of experience I could bring. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think that there are, depending on you as a person, some emotions are scarier to think about at different times. Right. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, and that's the other tricky part too, is like, how, you know, finding how far to go with it internally to get what you need without, you know, <laughs> gone crazy. Yeah, right. Um, well, that, that brings me to the next question. So what was, or has there been, you know, that time where you really lose yourself as a performer and you're actually crying or you're actually, you're actually in that moment, in that character, um, mm -hmm. Was there one that you really remember that was just uh, gives you goosebumps or makes you feel, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, Louis for sure. I mean, the the in the third act and the last scene of Louis. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, saying that goodbye. Was, yeah, saying <laughs> saying goodbye in the, in, the, in the middle of the potter there was that little stop and the children run to you, and I mean I I could I mean if I think about it too much right now I could I could lose it. Um, sure. <laughs> So that, that's, that's the big one for me. Yeah. And I think musically too, I find that the ballet scars the music or they connect somehow. So I only have to hear the beginning of that music and all that emotion is. Um, yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just one last question. Um, our relationship with an audience as a dancer, there's always a question about what does it feel like when you bow and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, than when they laugh or when they're quiet or can you describe what that feeling is is there a way as a dancer to that connection because there is one that is unique with an, a live audience right um i don't know the only way i can explain it or if, i guess try and yeah verbalize it is is that sometimes there's a it feels like a, a vibration like a silent vibration or a, um, uh, a warmth I don't know something in the air um, especially with still when it's really really quiet in the yeah in the audience um, if there's no music or something it's a sonic section then it can be really uh, a tactile sensation and sometimes you know it's a, a, you know you obviously you forget that the audience is there um, but uh, there are those moments where you feel like you're in a, a, a big bubble you know or something mm -hmm. and there's uh, um i don't know it's hard, hard to say a vacuum um that is energized somehow it's uh, I don't yeah. know, it's a strange no it's strange a strange thing. thing that's why it's fun to try to come to what that description is i always think as a choreographer you make a ballet and suddenly the audience react or laugh in a section that maybe in the studio we were not reacting to. And mm -hmm. then there's sections that we thought were very funny or strong that yes. there's no Broken. reaction. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you learn a lot. And the first time we have that is in the dress rehearsal, but not until that full audience is there that right. you feel that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, so was, go on, go on. I, know, I, was, I, was, I was just gonna say in the, um, what made me think of that, what you said just now was, um, the laughter in Sylvia in the third act was so strong, you know, with and the babies. <laughs> yes, yes, with the babies and stuff like that. Yeah, it really came across to the because sometimes, you know, the audience tell you people tell you afterwards, oh, that was so funny. Everybody was laughing. And you're like, well, I couldn't I couldn't hear anybody in the audience yeah. laughing. So, no. But that was the time on stage. I could really feel everybody coming in. You know? Yeah, that so surprised me, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for joining us and uh, stay safe and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, right. thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye.